All right, so this is the next day, and I have left 50 acres in a cabin, as in Mike, and I'm on my way to Bar Run Forge, as in Troy and Eli. I'm about a half hour into an hour and 15 minute drive towards their place, and I can't wait to get there. Wow, it sure is a beautiful day. It's a little overcast, but that's okay. I don't mind, it's good when the sun isn't baking in your window. It's 68 degrees, that's optimal for me. Anything over 75 is not my favorite. I love these old country roads. This isn't a whole lot different from where I live, but it's really nice. Wow, that was a beautiful house. I love it. I love that big old brick house with the white fence all around it. Oh, and before I forget, I'm gonna be making a playlist for this trip. I didn't mention it in the last video. Maybe I'll, before I completely edit it, I'll pop in there and, and mention it, but we'll see. But definitely check out the playlist for these videos on this trip. Just about there. We should be seeing it pop up soon. I passed it. Okay, I turned around and I, I know this barn. It says the barn I, I see in the videos. So I'll catch up with you when I, uh, See what's going on. Yeah, this is a 21 foot uh, disc. It's a rock flex, flex disc. Sunflower makes a really heavy disc. So the same, the same width of disc on most other uh, disc will, will weigh about 3,000 pounds less. This is a very heavy disc, so it takes a lot more horsepower. The tractor we use for this disc is 155 to 160 horsepower. Wow. And it's everything it wants. You have a hundred acres, uh -huh. and you've got. It looks like you've got buildings over there. Are well, those the, yours? The built the white building right there is our neighbor, and then the white house back here is my brother. So that line there is the farm line to the tree line, and then that tree line followed all the way around here, and all the way around to there to my sister's house on the on that corner of it. But everything inside, then there's a woods and a creek back that back that way. It's a pasture. But other than that, that's part of the 100 acres. Now, these are the people who are staying here overnight. Is this your camper or this is this is somebody camper. else's? This is All our right. camper here. One of the guys that's coming in is going to stay in that camper. It oh. also acts as our uh, porta potty for the weekend, too. <laughs> uh, saves us having to go get one, so that works yeah. out pretty good. They Home learned. Depot is selling, or not selling, but renting. Oh, wait, yeah. Wait a minute. Lowe's. Was it Lowe's or Home Depot? I think I both remember. are actually doing it now. Wow. The, right out there in front of the store. The orange item there uh, is the drill, and that's a narrow row uh, planter, and that's for beans and wheat, so small grain. It's uh, 20 feet wide, no till. Wow. And you just and you just did a major planting this last week, right? Yeah, the past last weekend. What did you plant? Corn and soybeans, and they're all planted for the year. And then the wheat behind us, once that's harvested, uh, then we'll go in with this machine here. That's wheat? Yeah, that's wheat right there, winter wheat. That was planted in the fall. 
and once that's harvested in late June, early July, then we'll go back in with that orange planter there and uh, plant another crop of soybeans. So we get two crops out of the field in one season. Awesome. Yep. So should we should we attack this from the front or the back? Yeah. Well, this is the back side, so. Yeah, this is the back. And this is? This is a, a Gleaner, Agco Gleaner R62 Combine. Uh, this is powered by uh, an 8.1 liter, I think. I gotta uh, back up just so I can. Cummins diesel, it's a big machine. Holy cow. Yeah, it's got a great big Cummins diesel uh, motor in it. And it operates a 30 foot grain head. Uh, so we can take, when we're harvesting wheat or beans, we can go 30 feet at a time. And uh, around here, that's not very big. <laughs> so what kind of auger is this? This is a 61 foot, uh, eight inch grain auger. So it, it puts out a pretty good amount of, of uh, grain that we can go from, a, say, a wagon or a cart or something like that and put it in our, our big grain bin. And uh, we don't often use it. We, tr we try to sell right out of the field, try to get it dry enough to sell straight out of the field so that we don't have to handle it more than once. Uh, but th it does come in handy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is the front uh, of the combine. We've got the two combines. We call it New Glen and Old Glen. Glen the Gleaner, Old, old Glen the Gleaner, New Glen the Gleaner. This is actually a 1975 model. Uh, the Gleaner L is a 1975, and this is a 1997 model. So both of these machines are literally antiques. But sorry, uh, people, I can't back up <laughs> far enough to see these. This is made by Alice Chalmers, and Alice Chalmers eventually became Agco. So that's an Agco. This is an Alice Chalmers or Gleaner. Uh, Gleaner was Gleaner Baldwin was one of the first people in the United States to create a self-propelled combine. In fact, they were the first in the United States to make a self-propelled combine. And this is this is a good old machine. We we really like old Glenn. And, wow. uh, yeah. So because I can't back up far enough to see this stuff very well, you're going to have to check out his channel. And what is that channel? Our channel is Bar Run Forge, and it's that way on everything. That's B-A-Triple-R-U-N-F-O-R-G-E. Cool. <laughs> so what is this? This is a Deutz Alice, uh, what's called a disc bind or hay bind. This cuts our, our hay and then conditions it as well. It has conditioner rollers on the back. This is a 10 foot, cuts a 10 foot wide swath. Um, again, I like this brand. This is one of my one of my brands that I really like to use. And uh, yeah, th this this is a good machine. This has really made a big difference. We we've, we've been cutting with old machines with sickle bars on it. Switch over to a disc machine has really helped us tremendously. What you see on the back side is the grain head for Old Glen. This is what we cut wheat and soybeans with on Old Glen, and this is a 20 foot. Uh, as compared to the new Glen, which has the 30 foot. So the comparison, as big as that is, add another 10 feet and that's what new Glen carries with it. Wow. Yeah, so we can so we can cut 40 feet at a time with both combines. Which is, that sounds crazy, but there are guys in our area who have 40 foot heads on their combines. Cool. <laughs> so are these the famous doors? These are indeed the famous doors. These are the current famous doors. Last year we had the doors on the other barn blow off this year we had a tornado hit, which was on our channel. Uh, I got video of it actually hitting everything around here. And these doors were demolished. Our tarp got torn up on the barn, bent the frame and everything. So this barn is actually gonna get to get, to get destroyed and brought down and uh, a new, uh, new building put up in its place probably. Cool. If I trip on this. <laughs> So what barn is this? This is a barn we still call the sheep barn, and but we haven't had sheep in here for like 30 years, 25 or 30 years. But it's what it was built for initially. Now it is a, a barn that houses a lot of our equipment and holds some of our smaller equipment, uh, like my absolute favorite 1970 Deutz uh, D100-06. That's a 100 horse tractor uh, in that small frame right there. And then uh, the Deutz Alice uh, square baler, that's an HD 490. That is a hog of a square baler. That thing is amazing. To give you perspective, when you're looking at the head on Old Glen, this is the head for New Glen. Wow. So that's a, a 
bit of a difference in size. So, so I think we need to say something here, and I might have to cut this. But sure. Uh, Ridge Life, come yeah. on, Homestead, uh -huh. and Three Mississippi, uh -huh. step aside with your tractors. <laughs> you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing against these yeah. things. Although they don't try to compare them themselves. No, they, they. they've already pretty well admitted that yeah. Troy's got the big boy <laughs> toys. So. And even I have bigger tractors than me. Right. Yeah, our smallest tractor right now is 100 horsepower. What is this thing? This is a round baler. Yeah. Um, so it takes it makes a four, four, four foot by four foot round bale and wraps it up, ties it up, and kicks it out the back. So some people, like on a, on a feedlot, will like the bigger bales. Uh, as opposed to the small square bales. And that's what this, this machine makes. It does a great job too. So I know something that people are going to say is, man, we would like to see this stuff working and doing stuff. So why don't you check out Bar Run Forge's channel? Yeah, we, we don't just do forging. Uh, you know, we do the farm life here as well. Uh, you know, we raise chickens and we've got the garden and uh, the crops and the foraging and all kinds of other stuff. We try to get it all in. Uh, to, to show everybody exactly what happens here on Bar Run Farm. Cool. Maybe we should uh, take this segue here into what animals you have yeah. on your property. Looks like you've got some baby chicks. Yep. So tell us what you do with that. Well, these are, this is a brooder we got. These are the ones that used to be in tractor supply, and we've had great success with them. I don't know what everybody else's problem was, but we're having a good success with it. Uh, right now we have uh, 60 Freedom Rangers, uh, Freedom Ranger chicks in here. They're a week old today, uh, so we're we're doing pretty good with them. We, I got to clean out tomorrow. Um, it, the the whole brooder is due for a for a clean out, but we'll uh, pop it open and let you see those guys in there. Hey baby chicks. <laughs> so these will be for meat. These are meat birds. Meat birds, those are the chunky ones. Yep. And the Freedom so, Rangers will go about to uh, about 10, maybe 12 weeks, and then they'll, they'll be processed at that point. So are the meat birds the only breed you have right now? No, we also have layers as well. We have Americanas in another building, Americanas and Brahmas in another building, and then we have some um, Issa Browns and Leggards in another building as well. Okay, cool. Man, what do you got back here now? You got this thing. This barn packed. It is packed full. This is a, a hay tetter. Uh, this is Deutz Far hay tetter. It's got four baskets on it, so I can cover a pretty good swath. And what it does is it fluffs up the hay so the air and the sun uh, get to it, makes it dry out and cure a whole lot better and a whole lot faster, means we can get in the field faster. And then finally, end up with the old uh, New Holland Roller Bar 56 rake in the back, and it rakes up the hay in a, a 10 foot. 10 foot swath that it catch it catches, rakes the hay up into a row so we can bale it. Cool. And you got a then the old livestock trailer. Livestock We've trailer? had the livestock trailer for some time now. Right now it's a kind of a storage unit for some of Eli's stuff, <laughs> getting ready for his move into his new house. But yeah, we just keep the livestock trailer around. We uh, we plan on having some more livestock next spring to put in pasture. So it's just always handy to have a, a good livestock trailer around. Cool. All right, so what do you got going on here? So we have the first kind of iteration of our raised beds. Uh, we wanted to get into raised bed gardening quickly. So we went to Rural King, we bought uh, the feed troughs, poked holes in the bottom of it, filled it up with the hoople culture. Uh, so we got brush and, and limbs and everything down at the bottom and then filled it up with the good soil, mixed all the amendments in. We've had great success with this. This is great for, my mom's a little bit older, she has a hard time leaning down my, uh, michelle my wife she's the same thing this makes it so much easier for both of them to do anything here in the garden and it works out really great for us cool and you even got an indoor kind of situation yeah, we have here. A, a greenhouse that is also got raised beds in it and i made this where, where these panels can be removed and it's got screening on the inside so the varmints can't get in so if it gets like crazy, super hot or whatever, and we just want to use it as a grow house, it's multi-purpose. So we can just use this just to grow stuff, or we can use it as a greenhouse. So these panels do come off. It makes it a little bit uh, easier to grow in here. So let you just kind of slide on in there and see the interior. All We're right. getting ready to start our spring stuff. We're a little behind, but not that big a deal. I went ahead and put raised beds in here so we could also grow 
uh, year round in, in standard soil. Same thing here, it's got the Google culture in the bottom and then we put the amendments in. Has a watering system, uh, it's temperature controlled, we have the sunshade, Ooh. so the, the retractable sunshade, uh, and it does make a big difference in here as well. All right, and you got chickens next door. Yep, in the hen house. So this is the hen house. We tried to make a nice setup for the hens. Our layer hens are in here. We're, now we've got just five. These are our original layers. Uh, you see we've got some legrins, Issa Browns. And the way I set this up was so that it was easier, again, for Mom and Michelle to come in to check eggs, just open these up, reach in, get the eggs. Uh, the water the, the water goes through the, through the wall, so we don't have to get in and mess with them. Same way with the feeder. The feeder they just reach through the hole and get the, get the feed out. Hey, buddies. They're making a racket. Wow, those are beautiful. They've been pretty healthy. Those are some beautiful chickens. <laughs> wow, they're big. They're well taken care of, that's for sure. Sweet they're deal. spoiled brats is what they are. Then you got your storage all above. Yeah. And... yeah, when I built this, I wanted to put the feed room and, and all the all of our chicken stuff all in one area so we could keep, keep track of it. Got bedding ready to go. We got a little sick bay just in case we get one that doesn't feel so good. We can keep her separated and uh, feed and water her and bring her back to health. Sweet deal. Back behind here, we have the original little chicken coop that we started with, with the chicks. And uh, it serviced us really, really well. Now it's kind of their play area. They get to come out and come outside. And if again, if we need to separate, we can close you know one or two off in here keep them bedded, keep them taken care of. So that gives them an outside run and it's all on paver blocks so it's easy to clean up. Yeah. It's, really nice. it's a very nice setup. It's worked out well for us. And what do you got? Your what? Oh, that, what is this? Uh, that's fuel, that's gasoline. Oh, cool. Gravity fed. Our other chickens are in here, our other lay laying hens. And I just picked up some eggs. Uh, you can see in our bunch, we have some green egg. Uh, kind of some light blue and some brown egg layers in there. Uh, again, these are Brahmas and Americanas. And this is just an old corn crib that my great-grandfather built like in the early 50s. And uh, so we didn't have a use for it. So we adapted and made it into a chicken coop for, we've got 20 layer hens in here. Wow. And they're- Those are big chickens too. They're a happy bunch. Sweet deal. <laughs> so having that door there and the way this is, they're pretty secure. I don't have any real worries about the, the chickens in here. They're away from varmints and, and it's, uh, it's pretty airy. So I don't have to worry about them getting too overheated in the summer either. Sweet. Chickens are right next to our big 10,000 bushel bin. We'd say it's big to us. Again, some of the other ones in our area get <laughs> tens of thousands of bushels for their bins. This grain bin here uh, was put up with the purpose of housing when we had several more acres to house our grain. We can hold on to it for two reasons. Number one, if our grain is too wet, we can put it in here and dry it down with heat and air. Or if we want to hold on to it for the market, we can hold on to it that way. Uh, that way we can keep a good eye on our grain and market it to the best of our ability. But to give you a perspective on the size of the bin, I'm now not even at the top, but I'm at the top of the stairs. So this will hold a lot of grain. to do this with the camera <laughs> and see what I'm doing. All right. So what's this thing? Well, that's an airport. If we were to bring the uh, the auger that we saw in the other building and put it up top here, we open that top, we climb up there, open that top up, then the auger puts the grain in from the top and then it funnels out and fills up the bin. 
Awesome. Okay. Then just as an inspection hatch or a hatch where you can get inside. Down to the air rated floor. Oh, it's empty. I always wanted to build a house using a silo. <laughs> I thought that would be cool. Yeah. There's a steep ladder going down that sucker. Where to next, buddy? Okay, we're rolling. Okay. So this barn is one of the newer barns on the property. It was actually built in 1978 uh, during a blizzard. <laughs> but it's actually had some damage to it. Uh, the doors are west facing, which means the hardest winds come right out of the west and hit a smack on. So last year, that being built in a storm would uh you said it was built in a storm well it was built during the blizzard in 1977 really so it's been cursed yes it's been cursed all these years and the doors keep flying off of it so this becomes the kind of the uh, mechanical building it's got concrete floors so i keep most of my tools in here to work on equipment and i try to leave enough space in here to pull a piece of equipment in here and work on it so it houses the pool benches, the bolt bins, air compressor. You have nothing but serious equipment and tractors and <laughs> I try. bailers and I try. even your even your golf cart is beefed up. <laughs> it's, it's called a Bobcat Tool Cat. Yeah. Uh, it actually has a fork or a, or a lift point on the front, like a front end loader. Uh, this piece of equipment is absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, it's probably the handiest piece of equipment we own. Calling it a golf cart was a joke, people. <laughs> yeah, it actually has a suspension of a half ton pickup. Holy truck. cow, that. Wow. I, yep. I just looked at it because I was looking through the viewer of yeah. the camera and I couldn't see it. Yeah. So you basically got a. It's four wheel drive, four wheel steer, half ton pickup truck, uh, suspension. It's got dual cylinder hydraulic lift bed. Yeah, and it lift about 2,000 pounds. Here it is, people, the first time you'll ever see a golf cart with a front loader. <laughs> Forklift. And we wow. can put all the Bobcat attachments on it. Okay, now Ridge Life can drive his tractor underneath yeah. this tractor. Yeah, th these, these are my tiny little pieces of equipment, Tim and, and David. <laughs> Don't worry, they won't even watch this. <laughs> and the thing in the back is or maybe a they will. Part. What's that? Maybe they will. You never yeah, know. Yeah, they might. Uh, that's a, a 475 bushel grain cart. And we've got two essentially that size. So that allows us to put uh, most semis will hold about 1,000 bushels. So between the combine and the current grain carts, we can fill up an entire semi of grain. Wow, look at those supplies. That's all like gear oil and oil and. Yep. And parts for equipment. And that's probably just one place you store it. Right. And then the, the green Ooh. and black things are seed totes. So our grain, our seed grain gets delivered in that way. Uh, and then we put it on the seed back and the seed back will vacuum it into the planter. So, so we're not even going to tell you what this is, people. You're going to have to go and watch his video. <laughs> yeah. So what was that? It doesn't give away the name, does it? No, it just says this sucks, I think. Yeah. Go watch the video that says this sucks. <laughs> That's your homework, people. That'll explain it all. Bar Run Forge. And as far as we're concerned, this is the big boy. Uh, this is a Deutz Alice 9150. This is somewhere around 160 horsepower, plus the duels, plus the front wheel assist. So it's probably producing what most tractors would be at about 170 to 175 horsepower, turbocharged with the cab. 
Essentially what I'm saying is Bridge Life, come on homesteading, three Mississippi could all park their tractors inside this tractor and this tractor would eat them. I, I can't even back up far enough to see this. <laughs> but I will tell you what is more your speed, Ridge Life. Come oh, here we go. And three Mississippi. There you go. Yep. The lawnmowers are here. If you me. ever get stuck, he'll 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 haul you out. <laughs> And he's got a regular right on too. Since the family's been here for 120 plus years, obviously some of the structures here are old, including the old farmhouse. It's had some additions done to it. That house was built in 1854, 1856, something like that. And it's had some additions done to it. So that's the old farmhouse. Uh, it's where I grew up. And uh, I don't know where I grew up or at least where I aged. How about that? <laughs> Wow, it's about 20 years older than the house that I'm remodeling. <laughs> so you just smile and look stupid and for a while. <laughs> oh, and the camera lens is right there. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what in the world is this contraption? <laughs> so the crazy thing that looks like a, a crazy washing machine here is our chicken plucker. Uh, it's fascinating to watch, really. You stick a chicken in here after you've uh, dispatched of it, so to speak, and then uh, spray water in here, and as it rotates, basically like a washing machine, it uh, plucks the feathers off for you. It takes about 10, 15 seconds. Turn it off, pull the chicken out, and then you got a pluck chicken ready to rock and roll. Wow, you wouldn't even think something like that would work, but... <laughs> Works like a dream. <laughs> I've seen it on other videos, and yeah, it, it does the job. It does it does a really good job. <laughs> All right, so I have seen on previous videos that you have done, you have showed this uh, way of doing potatoes, so why don't you explain that to me? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually tried it a little bit different this year. We normally do it with uh, square bales. Um, but we have the round bales here that we don't really have a use for. So basically all we do is we take a little notch cut out here, put some dirt in, and take just a chunk of potato that's got the, uh, the sprout going in it. Push that in here, put the dirt into it, kind of let nature do its thing. Uh, supposedly the way that they grow in the straw is actually uh, pretty good for how they develop their root system and everything. We've had great success with it. We tried it last year on the straw bales and the square bales. Had a bunch of potatoes grow out of it, and it was just some random potatoes we had that were growing sprouts already. But that's the gist of it, really. Do you remember the title of that video? I believe it's just straw bale potatoes. Um, okay. And we've got one that just came out for, for the round bale straw bale potatoes, the best way to plant potatoes. Check it out, people. Absolutely. Fire Run Forge. <laughs> so we're coming up on Eli's tiny house. And he's going to explain to us whatever he wants to explain. I saw the video of this being parked here and the foundation of it. Yeah. And if you want to know about it, check out the video. Yeah, absolutely. Don't make us tell you everything. <laughs> so, what's the square footage? Um, so it is a, the house itself is 16 by 40, and then it has a six foot front porch. So it's technically 16 by 46 in all in total. Has a, a gable barn style roof, so it kind of goes up and then goes up with another pitch. And so I got a little bit of a loft area up on the front here above the front porch. And uh, obviously the, the front porch area here, nice wide front steps. Sweet. Get a little inside tour here. Oh, I see you've yeah. even started framing the interior. Yeah, so all the framing is pretty much done. Uh, closet in the back there. The very back room will be my bedroom. And then this room will be a uh, bathroom, full shower, and toilet and sink. And then next will be like a utility room. Uh, full laundry, washer and dryer hookup in there, a little hallway, 
And then this side right here will be the kitchen. So there'll be an L-shaped kitchen and then just kind of a living area right here in the front part. So this area right here will be the kind of living area, you know, TV, couch, and everything like that towards the front. Sweet. Yeah. Did, I, I don't know if you told me, did you say that this is going to be a loft up here or is this going to be closed in? So that will be closed in basically just any type of utilities and storage. Yeah. Cool. So where is the door? Okay, you got, you walk through here and you've got your, what, a utility room and your closet? Well, this would be a uh, washer and dryer right here, full hookup washer and dryer. And then probably just some storage over here, set up a little closet and some, you know, totes and things like that. And then goes into the bathroom here and there'll be a shower over here to the left side, uh, toilet and sink on the right. We don't have lights in here, people, so you're just going to have to <laughs> be a little dark. use your imagination yep. if you can't see it very well. And then, so you got a master and your closet. Mm -hmm. Big full-size awesome. closet right there. And a uh, queen-size bed in here. Have a TV and dresser and nightstand and everything you need for your bedroom. And have a door right here on this side to come in and out. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's go have some uh, whatever <laughs> they got going yeah, on. Yeah, supper's calling. <laughs> <laughs>